call to order the regular meeting of the Sierra Sands Unified School District Board of Education. The board did meet in closed session. No action was taken. First thing I want to do, though, is to acknowledge the Richmond Elementary School students for being our greeters tonight. If you can hear us out there, kids, thanks a lot, and thanks for your welcome. We will open with the pledge led by our uh, Vice President Clerk, Mr. Rockwell. Ready? Begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We will now observe a moment of silence. Thank you. I would like to acknowledge we do have uh, board member Mary Campbell on the uh, screen today, uh, attending virtually. Uh, we'll move to item one, adoption of the agenda. Are there any changes? No changes. If no changes, we'll move to item two, approval of the minutes of the special meeting of September 16th and the special and regular meetings of September 19th, 2024. If there are no co corrections, they will stand as presented. It moves us to programs and presentations. 3.1, recognition of SSUSD transportation employee, Lindsay Rubini. Um, good evening, school board members. Um, Dr. Moore, thank you for allowing me to present this special award to Ms. Rubini tonight. Um, I am here to present an award of appreciation from the Sierra Sand School District to um, Ms. Lindsay Rubini, and I am very proud that her husband Josh is here and her daughter and Ingram are here. Um, on the first of October, um, when one of our um, students, um, Miss, I'm sorry, Miss Rubini was um, coming to pick one of our students up, um, the mother came running out of the house with her child in tow, screaming, fire, fire, help, help. And um, Lindsay, of course, stepped right into a action, um, went into the house with the girl's mother. She had her bus monitor, Maria Christie Mary took care of Floyd out, went back into the house and discovered that there was a um, grease fire in the kitchen, there was a pan of grease burning on the floor, and the cabinets underneath the kitchen were burning. And uh, for Lindsay to recognize that the pan on the floor was just about completely out, and started to fight the fire and put that fire out um, herself for this family um, without being asked to, which is pretty incredible. So I really wanted to say that Miss Lindsay Rubini is a, a, a real hero. Um, she is a brave woman, a hero, a woman of courage, and the woman of power in this case. And I really appreciate what you did for this family today. So this year, Sands Unified School District, thank you, thank you for your efforts. Now we want to present, we come up, we want to present <laughs> It is certainly wonderful to recognize that kind of commitment and quick thinking. I'm not so sure if it would have 
ended the same way had I been there. Uh, but we certainly appreciate uh, what you've done and what you continue to do for the children of our district. Thank you so much. That brings us to district recognition uh, process, up, reorganization process update. Uh, and that would be uh, Mrs. Sab Dr. Sabko. Good evening, President Ferris, members of the board, Superintendent Dr. Moore, staff and community. As you're aware, we have undergone a district reorganization process, and this is a monthly update to the board on our district reorganization. And just to provide the context, um, in the fall of 2023, the district reorganization timeline was developed based on a 2025 closure of James Monroe Middle School. From October 2023 to January 2024, the Facilities and Programs Advisory Committee met to determine the most viable configurations for our district reorganization. In January through April 2024, the board provided direction, seventh and eighth grades to be one junior high, elementary sites to include a TK sixth grade span, a magnet focus at Pierce, which is VAPA, and a VWIG STEM focus for 2526. In addition to those changes, um, the board provided direction for an independent study school with a middle college pathway. This summer, a district reorganization leadership team was convened to identify all of the essential work, advisory teams, and timelines. And so you see on this slide the various uh, reorganization teams. Tonight, we're gonna be focusing on the middle college aspect of the independent study school. I'd like to introduce uh, John Cosner, the principal of our alternative ed program and the pending principal of Insert Name Independent Study School, and Ms. Laura Herbert, our coordinator of secondary education. Mr. Cosner. I'm really excited to return this evening. Uh, some of you may remember that last spring we uh, looked for some direction from the board on pursuing this avenue and applied for a grant and uh, were able to obtain that and begin the work of what might this look like for our district. Uh, our vision and mission as we were exploring this avenue was how can we create more opportunities for students and what will this do to empower and enrich services in our district. We decided that this a middle college, the purpose of it is targeting a middle student. Some of you might be familiar with the term AVID, Advancement Via Individual Determination. Many programs like that look to figure out how do we implement that soft curriculum that naturally falls into houses of people with advanced degrees and career trajectories that some households might not otherwise have. And so this creates a wraparound service with articulating college, high school, and other postgraduate skills to help make sure students ensure success rather than it just happens in an ancillary fashion. Uh, the part of this process is a MOU that was adopted at our uh, sister college, at Saracosa Community College, the president of whom is here uh, as a guest, and we appreciate that support. Uh, and that's one of the decisions that the board will be looking at tonight. Uh, this program is designed to have a uh, target of two years of college under a student's belt as they graduate. So you can see that 60 credit mark. The idea is that most students will be able to achieve that. Some, even more so, getting uh, advanced specialties, perhaps in STEM and other fields, and others may end up going a certification route. So they may start that and decide that they want to do something more of a career trajectory in post-high school uh, advanced credentialing. Uh, the, uh, 
his, and then Ms. Herbert is going to share some of the wonderful uh, research that has happened since 2015. Mm -hmm. Other schools have had great success in this endeavor. And so a study in Texas has found that supporting those students in high school to complete even one college class, um, it found that it uh, increases the likelihood that they will attend college by approximately 2.2 times and complete that course, whether it's a two-year course or a four-year course, by 1.6 times. Um, this held with all racial groups, low-income families included, um, and those low-income families were actually more likely to attend that four-year college in Texas after high school. Um, there was a study that came out um, three days ago, actually, that was shared with us recently um, that showed um, that uh, when combining access with support, which you'll hear how we're going to do that shortly, um, it really um, increases the likelihood that those students are going to be successful um, in that dual enrollment class and enrollment following high school. Thank you. So talking a little bit about not just the broader research, but we know there are in California specific schools that have already led the way in this endeavor. You see three examples up here. Oftentimes they're referred to as the middle college at X college. So for example, ours would be the middle college at Saracoso. And it would be a Sierra Sands Unified School District students achieving those advanced credentials. The idea is to not only broaden access for all students, but specifically enable supports for those in most need. A 70-30 model is really valuable because not only does it give access to those who would not have it, but you allow access to those high-performing students and the tide raises all ships, to use a local Navy term. Uh, those uh, students can often lead the way and that cohort model really is able to thrive in that unique environment. Uh, usually it's a, a lottery if you have two, more applications in two separate pools and they found success in a 2.0 to 3.5 being the 70% and the 3.5 and above being the 30%. Uh, the college has already recognized several classrooms in their beautiful new library that would be at our disposal for this program. And we're looking to start with a ninth grade cohort. The idea here would be you have a specific teacher and specific staffing set to be able to help with these wraparound services. And you start with a freshman group of 35, and then the goal would be to add a new freshman cohort every year. You would have some onboarding if there was attrition, but these programs generally have very low attrition and high success rate. Some programs have almost 100% success rate, not only with graduation, but also with accumulation of college credits and oftentimes with at least a certificate, if not an AA or sometimes multiple AAs if a student is really advanced seeking multiple related specialties. So the idea would be at the end of four years, we would have 140 students or more being able to join in this program as our, we find the sweet spot for our community's interest. I won't get into the weeds too much here. I would love to, but it is a little technical and probably boring for most people. But in collaboration with uh, the Saracoso counseling staff, our own counseling staff, and a wide variety of experts, we looked at what classes based on what grade level of high school student would not only be high interest, but high value in uh, being able to find success, as well as being able to hit multiple benchmarks simultaneously. Primarily in this spectrum, what we see is two great things being able to achieve. The student would have their A through G high school graduation. That means their college readiness to Cal State and UC. In addition, they would have what used to be called the IGETSI, but now is called the CALGETSI, which is essentially their first two years of general education at college finished for transfer to university. Uh, in addition, you can see in the bottom of that junior, we even built in elective interests for specialties as well as remediation if needed in the college class. And this is, doesn't even take into account summer sessions or extra classes a student might wish to take. So an update on the timeline specifically. Uh, in, uh, back in, so just recently, several of us went to the uh, 
enroll, dual enrollment summit. We've got a lot of great feedback and interest in networking to be able to make sure that we look for bumps and pitfalls in the road to circumvent. Uh, if uh, based on the naming and the MOU of this board, we would then begin marketing and open up the window for applications for this program, potentially Dece uh, November 1st to December 15th. And then in the spring, we would send acceptance letters and finalize any last <coughs> staffing needs and uh, continue for the enrollment partnership in the college to be able to begin classes in this new program in fall 2025. Uh, this is a great picture of our own students up at Saragossa early. Uh, this was our fifth grade visit up at Saragossa Community College, and we recognize they are, I'm going to college, but pretty soon our next group will be, I am a college student. And what an exciting opportunity we have for our students uh, in a way perhaps never before in our community. And are there questions? If you have that promotional video. Oh, yes. Can move forward and then they'll cut us down when they're done. Okay. So while that's queuing, do we have any questions? Any question? Robert. Yeah, I have a question. Um, so you're going to start this with the ninth graders in 2025 with 30 students. Um, I know that we do dual enrollment with classes right now with seniors and juniors. So when that starts next year, will they still be doing their dual enrollment classes with the seniors and juniors? That's a great question. This is not an in lieu of, this is an addition to. So our CCAP agreement, which allows students to take college classes and get high school credit for right. continue, okay. this is specifically to allow that and to create that special wraparound services for those who otherwise wouldn't be successful. And as you said, to start early, usually it's juniors and seniors. Right, okay, thank you. Mr. Campbell, to add to that, this middle college is not a school in and of itself. It's within the new independent study school. So the current dual enrollment classes are at boroughs right. with borough students. Mm -hmm. So these middle college students would be in the independent study program. So they'd be going over to the independent school. Would they be taking their classes there? Or would they be taking their classes at boroughs? And the, or would the whole thing be independent at the independent study core classes at, okay. at Mesquite? Let's, let's, let's separate it out. So right now we have that CCAP agreement and we, ha we are able to offer some dual enrollment classes at mm -hmm. boroughs like right. English 101, English mm -hmm. 102, I believe, Econ, U.S. History. Um, and so that is at the boroughs campus and, and boroughs students. Right. So separate and apart from that, they wouldn't be... They, you can't be enrolled at Burroughs High School and in the independent study program okay. simultaneously. Right. So mm -hmm. the next presentation is going to be about the naming for this independent study school. As you know, Mr. Campbell, you worked in independent study, but mm -hmm. it was a program. Right. Now we're hoping that the board will move to a school, and then that school will be located at Cerro Coso with, under our MOU, generous MOU with classrooms. Okay. And that's where they would take their college classes, some okay. online, some in person. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Saffron. You're welcome. Any other questions from board members? Are we ready with the... Can we do a quick sound check with Mary? Mary, can you speak? I want to make sure we can hear you. Yeah, I'm here. Great. Thank you. Okay. Okay.
Welcome to the future of flexible and personalized education. In it's a little loud. Welcome to the future of flexible and personalized education in Sierra Sands Unified School District. <laughs> They're embedded though, so. Welcome to the future of flexible and personalized education in Sierra Sands Unified School District. We're excited to introduce the new Independent Study School, a 7th through 12th grade school launching in fall 2025. At Sierra Sands Independent Study School, we offer a unique blend of online and hybrid instruction tailored to meet the diverse needs of our students. Our program is designed to provide a high quality education that fits the lifestyle and learning preferences of every individual. Whether you prefer learning from home or a mix of online and in-person classes, our flexible approach ensures that you can thrive academically. Our dedicated teachers and comprehensive curriculum support your success every step of the way. At Sierra Sands Independent Study School, we believe in empowering students to take control of their education. Our goal is to provide the tools and support needed to excel in a dynamic and ever-changing world. We are proud to offer our Middle College High School program for our incoming ninth graders. This innovative program allows students to take college classes during the day and graduate with up to two years of college credit, giving them a head start on their higher education journey. Please join us on this exciting journey. Registration for Sierra Sands Independent Study School opens on November 1st and closes on December 15th. We invite all incoming 7th through 12th graders to apply and become part of our forward-thinking learning community. Don't miss this opportunity to be a part of something extraordinary. Visit our website or contact us for more information on how to apply. Sierra Sands Independent Study School, where flexibility meets excellence. We can't wait to welcome you. Very nice, thank you. Any other questions or comments after the, any questions or comments from members of the public? Any closing remarks? Thank you. That's a good closing remark. Thank you so much. That brings us to item three, presentation from the school naming committee. Mr. Ald. President Ferris, members of the board, Dr. Moore, uh, community, I'm honored to, hear, to be here this evening representing the naming committee, which is one of several different committees that uh, is working on the reorganization. Um, I have a presentation with two videos. Click the what? Down here. I'm clicking it. <laughs> ah, <laughs> there we go. So I'd like to start the presentation by sharing just a little bit of information about the committee, the work that we did, and who was in, included. So our mission was to make a formal recommendation to the board for the name, mascot, and colors of the following new schools, new in parentheses, because um, Pierce isn't new, but it will be a new magnet school. Uh, so we have two magnet schools, the STEM and the VAPA. We have one 7 through 12 independent study school with a middle college you just heard about, and then one 7, 8 grade junior high school. Uh, the naming committee included representatives from several dif different stakeholder groups, including uh, some of our associations, the site principals from each of the sites, uh, parents, 
and uh, administration, we actually invited some retired district personnel with some historical perspective to participate as well. Um, I can say, having been the one that called them to invite them to this committee, that it wasn't a quick yes, but uh, they definitely were on board and they were committed to the process. We know that this is really important. So what was the process? We agreed to examine several considerations, uh, relevant historical information, such as the origin of the current names of district schools, many of which you will recognize as people's names. Sherman E. Burroughs High School, for example, the first commanding officer at China Lake. Uh, we looked at current trends and common practices for naming public schools. Um, and we gathered student staff and parent input. And then we had some other considerations as well. Um, for instance, family legacy. If we're gonna change a school named after a person, how does that impact family and so forth? So uh, we took all of those items into consideration. Along the way though, we were uh, provided some guidance from uh, our contacts with the Department of Defense, it was not advisable that we completely change the name of Pierce and Buick because Pierce and Buick are both on the list um, and are recognizable to people familiar with the list uh, and it would just potentially add confusion. <clears throat> now we weren't, a, we were told we shouldn't remove them but we, uh, we were able to add to them if we so desired. So I'd like to start with those two programs, the first one being, well, I'll preface it with none of the logos on here are ours, um, all gathered via Google search. Um, we would have to come up with um, our own, but I just wanted to kind of give you a visual idea. So the committee agreed that we would, we would recommend that the STEM Academy be named BWIG STEM Academy that the mascot would be the Hornets um, after the F-18 Hornet that flies directly over BWIG uh, most days. It's also aligned with the STEM focus. Um, and the colors would be black and yellow like, like the bug, the Hornet. Um, the second magnet school, actually no, this is the video, right? So let's see if this works. I'm not sure how I did that. <laughs> you may not have. <laughs> Welcome, Welcome to the future of education in Sierra Sands Unified School District. We're thrilled to introduce Buig STEM Academy, a cutting edge kindergarten through eighth grade school opening fall 2025. At Buig STEM Academy, we are dedicated to fostering a love for science, technology, engineering, and mathematics in our students. Our innovative curriculum is designed to inspire curiosity, creativity, and critical thinking from a young age. From coding and robotics to environmental science and engineering challenges, our students will have the opportunity to explore and excel in a variety of STEM fields. Our state-of-the-art facilities and experienced educators are committed to providing a supportive and stimulating learning environment. At Buig STEM Academy, we believe in the power of hands-on learning. Our goal is to equip students with the skills they need to succeed in the 21st century and beyond. Join us on this exciting journey. Registration for Buig STEM Academy opens on November 1st and closes on December 15th. We invite all grades and students to apply to become a part of this vibrant community. Don't miss this opportunity to be a part of something extraordinary. Visit our website or contact us for more information on how to apply. Buig STEM Academy, where innovation meets education. We can't wait to welcome you. So that's the promotional video that, um, you know, if, if the board uh, decides to adopt the name, that's an example of what we would do as um, promotion um, for recruiting students. And then the second magnet school, the, the K-6 VAPA magnet school at Pierce, the, the naming committee recommends that the name be Pierce Academy of the Arts. And we also recommended that the, that the mascot stay the same as it currently is, the Panthers, um, just to maintain tradition and also cost savings. There's lots of murals that have been invested in and so forth, and that the colors continue to be blue and black. 
Here's their promotional. If I do this. <laughs> Welcome to the heart of creativity and innovation in Sierra Sands Unified School District. We are excited to introduce the Pierce School for the Arts, a new transitional kindergarten through sixth grade visual and performing arts magnet school, opening in fall 2025. At Pierce School for the Arts, we are committed to nurturing the artistic talents and academic excellence of our students. Our unique curriculum integrates visual and performing arts with core academic subjects, fostering a well-rounded and enriching educational experience. From painting and sculpturing to music, dance, and theater, our students will have the opportunity to explore and develop their artistic passions. Our dedicated teachers and state-of-the-art facilities provide the perfect environment for young artists to thrive. Join us on this exciting journey. Registration for Pierce School for the Arts opens on November 1st and closes on December 15th. We invite all grades and students to apply and become part of our vibrant artistic community. Don't miss this opportunity to be part of something extraordinary. Visit our website or contact us for more information on how to apply. Pierce School for the Arts, where creativity meets education. We can't wait to welcome you. So a little disclaimer there. Uh, Mrs. Baca, at the time this was shot, we thought it might be uh, the Pierce School for the Arts. The naming committee recommends that it should be of the arts. I know Mrs. Baca was very concerned that she had misspoken in the video, but it was before she had that information, so. All right, so the 712 Independent Study School uh, to include the middle college, we actually have a recommendation for two separate options. The first option would be uh, the name Independence School. Um, independence being associated with an independent path, um, but also um, could be seen as a patriotic um, uh, a theme as well. Mascots would be uh, the Patriots. School colors would be blue and white. But the second option would be um, the High Desert School. Uh, we would recommend the Bobcats as it aligns with, somewhat aligns with the, the, the Coyotes. I don't know if cats and dogs get along, but they coexist in these deserts, um, just like they'll coexist on that campus. And the school colors would continue to be blue and white in, in either option. And moving on to the junior high school, uh, we have two recommendations. The first one would do um, be a, um, a name of somebody who's very familiar in our, our community or to our community, I should say, Dr. William B. McLean Junior High School. Dr. McLean is, is credited with inventing the uh, Sidewinder missile. Um, and so the mascot would be the Sidewinders and the school colors would be red. So before I show you the second option, the second option comes mostly from the students at James Monroe and Murray Middle School. When we first uh, surveyed them, 100, well, 99% of Murray students said the school should be named Murray. And 99% of Monroe students said it should be named Monroe. So those that made suggestions, appropriate ones, we gave them, we gave them the survey and said, of these, what would you select? And this is their, their feedback. So there were two names that were tied absolutely even. One was Ridgecrest Junior High School and the other was China Lake Junior High School. Uh, the committee thought that Ridgecrest is in an awful lot of names, uh, including some other schools outside of our districts, and that China Lake is not. Um, and so that we, we gave the nod to China Lake. The mascot that they overwhelmingly picked uh, is the Phoenix, which actually is representative of New Beginnings, um, which it'll be a new junior high reimagined. Uh, so we thought that that was appropriate, and then the school colors, again, would, would be red either way, either option. So those are the recommendations from the naming committee. Any questions from board members? I, um, I, I have a question on, you talked about the participation of the students and the um, uh, teachers and administrators, and what, what kind of uh, 
avenue did you have for public uh, input or community input? Um, not, a, not, a, not a considerable amount. It was mostly based on the people in the committee mm -hmm. representing different aspects of the community, including current and past, um, so that um, we would have all different uh, perspectives. Uh, but we were mostly focused, and, and staff was surveyed as well at both Murray mm -hmm. and Monroe. It was difficult with the um, independent study school. We don't have students there yet, right? Um, but the junior high, um, you know, we relied on the committee as representation. So uh, as, as you can see, this is on our agenda for possible action. Um, there are several elements to this decision. Um, and I think some of them probably have some expediency that would be helpful to move on. I'm wondering if we might entertain uh, maybe a couple of different motions. Uh, Mike. Well, I, I, I just had a comment. Um, I, I, I agree with everything you've said with the names and, and of the, the, the two where we have uh, potential choices, uh, I just have a comment. Um, independent school being that we have independences up north of us in Inyo you know, County, mm -hmm. I'd be a little bit concerned about that. I, I like the high desert school because it's you know, high mm -hmm. desert. Um, uh, on the second one, um, I look at, we already have the lab on base uh, named after Dr. McLean, and I really like the China Lake Junior High School. I think, uh, personally, I don't think we have to have a bunch of buildings named after a person in the community, but uh, that's just my personal preference. I will, I will say that the committee shared your concern regarding independence. I guess the high school in independence isn't independence high school, but the community, the, the, there would be confusion. But, we, but I, 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 like, I like everything in front of me, and, right. and I would be fine with, with anything. So, Robert, do you have any comments? Um, you know, we do know that Murray's here because of our illustrious donations from the, the base which, um, you know, it's so awesome to be able to get 80% of that school built. Um, I did not know Dr. McLean, but I am very well aware of the Sidewinder missile and, and what it's done for our, um, for our country. And so, I mean, I, I do understand that we do have a building named after him. I drove by it the other day and saw it, so it's, it's a really nice building. Um, I, I omitted something that a particular historian would be very upset about. The other thing is that his wife taught PE at Murray, Dr. McLean's wife. So we thought that was a neat connection. Yeah. And the committee, I believe, also liked the M yeah. because they're M schools right now, so they liked that pattern of the another M school was another factor, I believe. Sure. Correct. So it's, it's just something I was, I'm very impressed with, with the, um, I'm good either way also, but I, I do like that. So I, I, I guess here's what I'm, what I'm toying with in my head here. Um, to, some, to some degree, these all, I think, deserve some individual merit and attention. So I'm a little hesitant just to clump them all with one, especially when we have some with potential variables here, to where later on we go, oh, gosh, I wish we would have talked about that, right? Um, so I am wondering if the board might consider um, with doing this in maybe three different steps. Taking the first two, the VWIG and the Pierce, which we had been, it has been recommended to us that we keep the, the key names the same. We're really only talking about the descriptors. Um, approving those so we can move forward with that. Then have a separate discussion about the, um, uh, the junior high. And we can decide whether we're ready to decide that or not tonight, and uh, um, I'm sorry, with the, then do the independent study separately because there are some variables there, and then a, a third discussion that says uh, what do we want to do or do we want to do something immediately on the McLean Junior High. Is that, is that a process you think might be clean enough? I make a motion would... that we accept the uh, uh, Buig and uh, Pierce uh, names. As recommended? As recommended. Second. I have a motion to second. Any discussion on that specific part of the decision? 
Okay. Yeah, just a comment. I, I agree with everything uh, the committee uh, took into consideration, and it all makes sense. I don't want to change anything. Yeah, and, and I also, I, I prefer the, especially in these magnet schools, the term academy, I think, gives it a, another level of stature that I think is, 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 is nice uh, for these two, rather than using the word school. So I'm, I'm, I'm in favor. Okay, so I have a motion and a second. Any questions or comments from board members on this? Any questions or comments from members of the public on this item? All in favor, see, please say aye. Oh, aye. I'm sorry. We have to take a yeah. uh, voice vote. Thank you very much, Mary. Uh, we will take a roll call vote. Uh, Mary Campbell. You're welcome, Bill. <laughs> okay. Aye. Robert. Aye. Mike. Aye. Kurt. Aye. And myself said aye. That is unanimous. That brings us to the independent school of the high, or the high desert school. Uh, there was discussion there uh, somewhat already on that specific uh, element of choice. Uh, yeah, can I, well, do we want a motion of some sort first or? A motion to select one of the names? <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's just, yeah, let's, let's, let's maybe, maybe let's talk about what they are and then maybe a motion that, that would prefer one over the other. Does that sound yeah, I guess like a? So, so uh, I guess I'd like to hear a little bit more about the, the these choices compared to others. I, I have to admit I'm not um, I'm not a huge fan of either one, and I think and I'm and it's the independent school for the same reasons that Mr. Scott mentioned, which is independence is just down the road, it's kind of a kind of odd, and then uh, the high desert school to me is kind of ho hum, right? It's it's not really I don't know. I, so I don't want to, I'm not going to sit here and overrule, you know, all the work that's been done by the, you know, the committee and I appreciate all that hard work, but I'm just kind of curious about where did these come from? How did it narrow down to these? And you know, there weren't any other options. Um, uh, there, there were a lot of options um, considered. Um, we did a lot of uh, activities surrounding names got into groups got up and walked the room um, contributed in a lot of different ways we, we really kind of focused in on um, either geographical relevant um, names kind of shied away from the um, naming them after people with the exception of one that's already well known in, in the, the city so we did talk about the fact that independence is right up the road uh, as a former Sherman E. Burroughs High School principal, I can tell you we used to get mail from John W. Burroughs High School in Burbank. <laughs> so there are some mistakes that are made, um, although I guess it isn't the Independence High School, um, but nonetheless, it, it could be confusing. And of the different geographical, you know, we considered lots of Sierras, lots of Vistas, we even thought about the wind, which didn't go over all that well. <laughs> but uh, you know, we, we talked about a number of, of different things and High Desert was the one that we landed on um, and ultimately settled on as a recommendation. Mostly because you, know, you, you think about Mojave Desert, well you have Mojave, right? You think about different um, desert type schools and all throughout the Victor Valley there's desert schools. Um, I'm sure there's a high desert school somewhere, but um, we, did, we just weren't familiar with one, and that's where we landed. Any other questions or comments on this? I guess I would say I, I do believe the committee process is an important process, mm -hmm. and I agree with uh, Kurt. I, I don't think I'm qualified just to pick something out of the air. So I, I see that we have two recommendations in front of us. Uh, I I think I agree with the group that the independence uh, choice is probably a little too confusing. I happen to like the Bobcat Coyote Association and the similar colors uh, for good or for bad. It, I, I think it strikes me well. Um, and so if those are the two choices, uh, and I trust that the committee did go through the process to try and determine something uh, appropriate and fitting. Uh, I, I would support the uh, recommendation for the um, uh, High Desert School. Any other comments?
So I would make a motion then that we uh, select the High Desert School with the associated bobcat uh, and the colors of blue and white for the uh, independent study school. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any questions? Any questions? So, from yeah, I, so I, I guess one of my questions is um, what, what is the need for timing on these decisions? I mean, I would assume that some of these schools, um, we've got to move out and do some things with them where having the name tonight would be, you know, yeah, enrollment important. begins November 1st. Next November 1st. month, yeah, right. right. Yeah, so. Uh, it was two weeks, actually. Yeah, right. <laughs> so no hurry. So, so no hurry, <laughs> right, exactly, exactly. Yeah. I mean, I would say of the four, the first two were, were critical. Um, so having movement there is, is positive. I think the independent school, as they open enrollment November 1st, is pretty important. I think you may have some time with the 7th, 8th, if you'd like to consider. Which, by the way, my phone's blowing up. We spelled McLean right on every other slide, but <laughs> I know it's misspelled there. Um, yeah, so, extra, everybody's extra telling extra me. <laughs> Any other comments, questions on this? Then I will call for a vote. Mary? Aye. Robert? Aye. Mike? Aye. Kurt? Myself, I. That brings us to the uh, Dr. William Me McLean Junior High School or the China Lake Junior High School. And I'll I make guess a motion that we name the new junior high school the Dr. William B. McLean Junior High School. I'll second it. I have a motion and a second. Any comments? I think just my, uh, my, my take on this is. Um, it's, you know, when I look at these two, I, I, I'm struggling, right? Because you did, the, you did the thing. You said the students said they wanted China Lake Junior High School. You want to do what the students want, right? And so that's, that's, a, that's a big tug for me. Um, but I like the uniqueness of the McLean uh, Junior High. I, I think that's really good. Um, I think, you know, Dr. McLean, the reason, the reason we're all here today has a lot to do with the fact that there was a Dr. McLean here, you know, 50, 60 years ago. Um, so I think, uh, you know, honoring him is a, is a, is a, is a powerful thing. And, and yeah, we have the lab on the base, and so everybody that goes on the base, most of the people probably that go on the base, have some understanding that there's a McLean lab. But that's not the community as a whole, and there's probably a lot of people that, you know, don't really know that much about him, and um, but I think that's a, I think you know again honoring his memory is a, is is a, is a pretty cool thing, especially knowing that his mm -hmm. wife taught at uh, one of the schools that we're we're talking about here, um, and then uh, you know and I love the Sidewinder as a mascot, I, I love the Phoenix as a mascot given <laughs> what we're doing too, so I'm really conflicted, but. I wanted to put a motion out there, put something on the table that we could go have a conversation around, and you know maybe we do it, maybe we don't, but let's we'll see. Any other questions or comments, Robert? Go ahead. Uh, to, go ahead just a comment. Like I said, I like it. I like them both. You know, I, I don't yeah. think I like one more than the other. Um, you know, the reason I, I went with China Lake was it encompasses everything, and, and it's not another building. Um, but uh, uh, when you make the motion, the motion is going to mm -hmm. Uh, encompass you, Mr. Rothwell, getting us a sidewinder to be at the school <laughs> on display. Yeah, sure. Okay. It, it's going to be limp, though. It's <laughs> just going to hang on a, a stick somewhere. <laughs> well, Robert, I, you got a I, comment? I saw one in PE once at Burroughs, so they're around. <laughs> and I saw a bobcat at Burroughs up stuck in a tree once, too. So that was there, too. So um, I like what Kurt said about clean. I think that name. Um, I like that William B. McLean Jr. I think that's a really clean name, I, I, and I am pretty impressed by what he did for our uh, for our base. So I really like that name. I, 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 you know, I'm not and not to argue against myself. I'm not. I don't think I'm doing that. But 
I mean, the, the notion of the phoenix is, a, is, is, is great. I wish there was some way, I mean, do they make a phoenix sidewinder or <laughs> is there a sidewinder phoenix? I mean, that I actually was, you know, again, not wanting to go against the committee and, you know, trusting their judgment, but I was like, I was like, it kind of, maybe if we could take the phoenix and have that be the name of the independent study school, I thought that would be kind of cool, but that's not what the committee came up with, so not, not, a, not one I could put, but I just, I'd love if there's a way we can somehow incorporate the, the thought of a phoenix um, in there in some way, uh, but you can't, you can't go away from a sidewinder if you're going to name the school, you know, after McLean, so that's, that's easy. So anyway. So I, I had, a, had a, another perspective on this I just want to share, and I, I, I am not against at all the concept of moving forward with the McLean and the Sidewinder. I think there's significant merit in that. Um, but I like many of you, I, I like both of them, and I really like the Phoenix idea, and I really like the idea that that was kind of the, what the students were behind. Mm -hmm. um, I also believe that this one is not as time critical and might allow us a little more time to get a sense of how the community feels about that particular um, decision. So um, I, I, I could, could support the board and move forward with it. Um, I also think it wouldn't be a, a real horrible thing if we tabled this specific one for another month, just to see now that it's gotten the exposure of light on it, if there's some kind of big uprising, the community says, "Oh, you know, this is this is what we, this is what we want to do. This is what we this is what we want." Because that was an element that wasn't a huge part of the committee process, and in the other situations, I don't think it was as important as it is necessarily in this particular one. Uh, could just open up more worm, can of worms, I don't know. But uh, I think we have two good choices here. Um, for me, it wouldn't, I wouldn't mind just getting a sense of the community on it. But uh, we have yeah, a, How would you envision um, getting that feedback from the community? I mean, a, a poll going out? Because I, I, either one, I'd be happy with yeah. either one. So I, I, I've got no issue uh, kicking that. Uh, Kicking down the road a little bit. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I, I, I guess um, <coughs> I don't know that we need to do a specific poll, but I, I don't know if, if someone has an idea of what, how we might get that sense. Well, have Mr. Ohm call him, please. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, I, and, and maybe maybe in the back of my head there was just this, this sense of if there was a spitz, I'm not going to go out and rattle the bushes, but if, if there is some kind of movement within the community says, oh yeah, this is, this is what we really ought to be doing uh, to hear it. Um, but again, I can, I can go either way. So if the board wants to move forward on this, we can. Um, and if I'm hearing no motion to table, we have a motion on the floor. I, I guess, you know, I'm okay to hold off if, if there, if we think there's a way that we're going to get some, uh, quality feedback, mm -hmm. um, you know, if we're going to just wait another month and have the same conversation with the same information, then I don't think it's worth, <laughs> worth tabling. But, uh, but yeah, no, if we, uh, if we think we'll get more information, I'm, I'm good with waiting. Any other comments? Mm -hmm. uh, well, I was just going to say that if, um, you know, you live with the name, you play around with the name a little bit um, and see if if that's what it's truly meant to be in the heart. One month. So you're, su you're supporting maybe waiting till next month's meeting to make a final decision? Well, yeah. I mean, yeah. It's, it's, I okay. mean there was good, there was pros and cons on, Based on all of them. And, and this one doesn't seem to have too much. Well, they all have time, re time restraints, but this one has a little leeway so you can live with it and work with drawings and just live with it for a little bit okay. and make sure you're happy thank you mary i think based on what i'm hearing then i'm going to make a motion that we table um do i have a second i'll second it motion to table takes preference over the motion on the floor uh a roll call vote on the motion to table uh and this to be tabled until next meeting mary aye Robert? Aye. Mike? Aye. 
Aye. Kurt? Aye. And myself, aye. So we are table this till the December meeting, and the others are in place. Thank you so much for your work, and thanks the committee for their hard work. A lot of exciting stuff going on in the Sierra Sands Unified School District right now. Okay, this moves us to uh, student members report. Kurt, you share with us the student members report. Oh yeah, I get to be the teenager again. All right, for Murray Middle School. Murray Middle School is celebrating a great start to fall with having our girls volleyball teams on a winning streak. This week they won against Wallace. Go Mustangs at this time, they are gearing for South Fork. We're getting ready to play in the annual Saracosa Volleyball Tournament in November as we finish up our season and start to prepare for basketball. ASB has been selling ghoul grams through October for fundraising. They are a dollar each for students with a fall or Halloween theme. Red Ribbon Week is approaching at the end of the month. The theme is Life is a Movie, Film It Drug Free. Our spirit days coming up are Jersey Day, Neon Day, and Red Ribbon Surprise. Our school music concerts are coming up with a Halloween theme that will be supported by PTSO volunteers on October 30th in the gym. As we head into cooler weather, Thelma and Louise, Ellie and Sprout, our wonderful canines at Murray, make the days special and have a positive impact on our students. We love these dogs and they make it a happy place for our kids. Avid is approaching a trip under Mrs. Bruchard, Bruchard's, Bruchard, excuse me, easy for me to say, Bruchard's leadership. And we are working with Monroe's Avid team to support our re-imaging junior high school. Murray Middle School worked with Mrs. Kristen Simpson to, to submit the Kern County Wellness Grant to support the health and wellness of our kids for, for an Hope to hear back positive and exciting news. Monroe Middle School. First quarter of the school year is behind us. This Friday, we will celebrate students' first quarter success with grade level awards, assemblies, and the gym. IABs are underway across campus to get our students ready for the all important CASP testing in the spring. Advisory and interventions are in full swing and going well. James Monroe Middle School held the fall dance, which was so much fun. The theme was across the decades. There were bubbles, dancing, and glow sticks. Parents have reported that students were the most excited about the pizza when they got home. Thank you to our wonderful PTSO for hosting the snack bar. The fall concert was another highlight this last month. Families and students came out to hear our wonderful muse musicians and singers perform. It's great to be a tiger. Mesquite Continuation High School. Three graduates were recognized at last week's awards assembly and barbecue to celebrate that milestone and recognize academic achievement. The student body improved their on-track graduation status by more than 25%. Awards were given for merit or honor roll and straight A's. 30 more and out the door t-shirts were also presented and it is always exciting for students to see their own graduation on the horizon. The Fort Irwin field trip is back on for December as students explore potential military branches and post-graduation opportunities. Our school is also scheduled to participate in a STEM expo at Mojave Air Spaceport with Kern County Superintendent of Schools and a career day at Saracoso. In addition, the Fleet and Family Group on base is partnering with Mesquite to do a series of educational sessions for students to help them prepare for adult life. This week, they start the series with a career assessment to help get the students rolling. Future presentations include finance, banking, resume writing, and so much more. The school would like to do a theme park incentive trip for students on track to graduate. So Mrs. Morose is leading a rummage sale fundraiser on the 25th. Thanks to everyone who has already donated. So please join us by bringing donations and coming to purchase from seven to three on the 25th. To show solidarity with those who have struggled with cancer, on Wednesdays we wear pink. Additional spirit days leading up to the fall carnival include Halloween colors, flannels, and costumes. Thanks to our ASB for helping students feel like they belong. Go Dragons, show them how to soar. And lastly, uh, Burroughs High School. We completed the first quarter and Burroughs has a lot to talk about. The seniors painted Bee Mountain on the 28th of September. The 24 on the mountain now shows 25, as we're sure you've seen. 
We'd like to extend a thanks to Captain Van Allen for letting us continue the Bee Mountain tradition. Our volleyball teams are undefeated in league, giving them the MRL League Champions title. We'd like to congratulate all of our volleyball players for this achievement. Tennis and cross country have had plenty of success as well. Football continues to improve and had their homecoming game last week. Speaking of homecoming, we once again held all of our homecoming events last week. We had fun watching teams participate in various games and speed walk from zombies in the amazing race. Then students ducked, dodged, and dove to put their class on top in dodgeball. The only junior team came out on top. We held our powder puff tournament where seniors won the cheerleading competition and the football players were crowned powder puff champions. The juniors took home the hit drill trophy. All classes finalized their Disney Heroes themed class floats during float building. Seniors won the float competition with their Avengers Endgame design. Homecoming parade and coronation took place before the varsity football game against Sultana. We crowned our 2024 homecoming queen, Unique Pacheco. Students had, a great, had great fun at the homecoming dance the next day. Thank you to everyone who participated and made homecoming possible. Besides homecoming week, October had other fun events like our annual culture fest. Students and families were treated to musical performances by the music classes, a drama production by Drama Company, Spanish poetry readings by the World Languages Department, a display of artistic pieces by the art department, and international treats provided by the restaurant classes. To celebrate our high achievers in the CASP assessment last year, we held a pizza party for all seniors who improved their scores. And speaking of tests, we held the ASVAB on the 2nd, and the PSAT and MSQT will take place next week. Um, I have a question, though, for Ms. Poole. Is the hit drill the same thing as the powder puff game? It's what Because I don't, I didn't see, did I, did I read and not hear <laughs> who won the powder I think puff it said game? Seniors, but it was not, it was included in the, it was included in the, the uh, cheerleading, I think. They grouped them together, so it was confusing. Oh, is that right? Okay. At least well, that's the way I interpreted it, whether it was right or not, I don't know. Seniors won the powder puff game? Yep. Got it. All right. Thank you. Thank you for clarifying for me, even if it was clear already to, for all of you. It was fuzzy. Thank you. <laughs> that brings us to reports from members of the board. Board members have anything they'd like to report? Robert? A um, couple things. One, uh, last Saturday I thought that was a tremendous workshop that uh, we had Vern from um, capturing, um, capturing Kids' Hearts uh, from Houston, Texas come out and uh, thought that was well worth that Saturday that uh, we were able to get together with him and learned a lot about what's going on in the school districts with capturing Kids' Hearts. So I really appreciate him coming out and uh, allowing us to have that. And also big thanks to Ms. Larson um, and the cheerleaders that put on the uh, assembly and the pep rally and all this stuff that happens at Burroughs. Being a Burroughs graduate, I remember those days and um, from all the prints from Carrie Cope and all her staff, that's a, that's a huge week. So thanks for everything you guys do. Appreciate it. Oh, I, on a, I absolutely enjoyed the uh, capturing kids for training, uh, obviously validated all the positive remarks we've uh, heard about it and just wanted to thank you for setting that up for us. Uh, yeah, just briefly, um, so I, I haven't made a lot of football games in the recent year or so, but I did go to the homecoming game the other night and um, was, was impressed with the way the guys played. Um, didn't end up the way we wanted, but uh, they did a, I thought they did a great job, and I was especially pleased with the crowd. I mean, there, there was a great crowd, and uh, I, uh, you know, sometimes when the team is not winning lots of games, the crowd kind of dwindles. I know it was homecoming, so that helped, but uh, yeah, it was, it was a kind of a packed house and a great, great vibe, and yeah, I want to congratulate the school and the community for uh, making that a success, so thank you. 
couple things I want to comment uh, on. Uh, I agree with the um, participation in the Capturing Kids' Hearts. I think uh, it's been shared with us many times how uh, valuable it is and how fundamental and basic it is can be for um, how we accomplish what we need to with our students. Um, in case you're wondering, this is our social contract that we designed on that uh, um, that morning, and uh, uh, I, I believe there are a number of principles that uh, we went through and understood that uh, will will and can uh, help us grow as a team, as individuals, to perform better, uh, just like what I see happening in the classrooms uh, by some of those concepts. So I, um, I believe we are on board. I believe we understand that this kind of thing can be a systemic change, and we want to be a part of that systemic change and, uh, and help drive that and participate in it uh, uh, completely. So thank you for what you're already doing. Uh, Forgive us for being a little slow in our adoption, but uh, uh, please give us the grace to, to grow to it so that we can be what we need to be uh, in the leadership roles that we play. Uh, agreed also that it was a wonderful experience, the homecoming experience, and uh, was nice to be a part of it. And I know, as Robert, you've said, it represents a lot of work uh, on the part of many of our staff, and thank you for what you do for our kids, because in the end result, that's what it all really comes down to. So thank you for that. That brings us to, um, oh, Mary, did, was there anything you wanted to share? I didn't mean to cut you off. I keep forgetting that. No, I'm the, I agree with everything. Homecoming's the best. High school, all that, it's wonderful. And I want to thank Mr. Rockenwell for being there. That you know, it, was, it was a great <laughs> experience. Um, I will turn it over. Can I say one other thing? You bet. Sorry, I'm long-winded tonight, I guess. Um, you know, after seeing um, all the, that stuff that we just looked at on the different schools, and it, it, it's to me, it's like, man, this is reality. And uh, to be able to for kids to have choices, um, you know, the the magnet schools and the uh, the different choices that they're going to have in the college and uh, and the new junior high. It's just before we know it, this stuff is happening. And um, I'm just glad that kids get the opportunity to choose some different avenues to go if they want to. You know, I'm not going to, I have a grandkid that all he does is gets boxes and builds all these crazy little things. And it's just like, you know, I know where that kid wants to go. But um, no, it's, it's, it's awesome. I'm really glad to see that. And thank you, Mr. Kaiser, for, for doing that for us. Appreciate it. It's clearly an exciting time to be member of Sierra Sands. There's uh, a lot on the horizon, as you say, opportunities for kids. That's, that's why we're here, so um, it's exciting. At that, I will turn over to Superintendent's report, Dr. Moore. Thank you, President Ferris. Month one enrollment is now officially certified, and our enrollment was 4,966, down 116 from this time last year. So that is something we're looking at, and we are expecting that school choice and options for our families will, will be helpful. We have been one of the anomalies statewide in holding steady on our enrollment from year to year, and it is finally catching up to us. So we're, we're looking at creative ways to attract and retain our students. Our attendance rate for that first month was 92.2%, and so our schools are working diligently with our families to see how we can get our students to school every day. And there are some uh, new opportunities that legislatively have become uh, available that we're exploring to see how we can really maximize attendance and ultimately student learning, because of course that's what it's all about. Since the last board meeting, I had the pleasure of meeting with eight of ten of our schools so far as I tour the district holding Ask Me Anything listening sessions, and it's been a wonderful experience and conversation with our incredible staff. Uh, we start with good things, a Capturing Kids Hearts piece. That What I've been sharing this week is good thing is Saturday, our workshop, and how we're excited to continue modeling. Uh, but there are good things happening across the district, and having those conversations, talking about some of our big projects, coming up that we're in the middle of. Hearing from our dedicated staff how we can continue to improve has been really rewarding and I would like to thank all of the staff who took their time either before or after school or during their lunch break to attend these listening sessions and to, to provide their input. 
Um, also, we started our leadership cohort. We have 16 of us studying a book and talking about leadership, and these are people from across the district in various roles, classified, certificated, administrative, all looking at how do we increase our leadership capacity in whatever role we serve in and potentially looking to build a pipeline for leadership within the district. So that has been a great experience. Um, and then recently, this week on Monday, we hosted as a district a community forum on Measure AA, Sierra Sands Unified School District Repairs and Safety Measure that's on the November 5th ballot. And the purpose of that forum was to share fair, impartial, and accurate information about Measure AA so that voters can come to their own conclusion on how to vote. And I would like to thank Board President Bill Ferris, Data President Eileen Poole and CSEA President Sylvia Pionis for serving as panelists on that forum and answering community questions. The video from the event is now posted on the district's YouTube channel so that those who are not able to attend live can still view if they are interested. And I'm looking forward this weekend to the Desert Empire Fair. The district will have a table in the Mesquite Hall. And as of tonight's conversation, we plan to have a QR code with a poll so you can chime in on the naming of our reimagined junior high name. And we'll make sure to have that happen as well. And so we're looking forward to seeing our community out and about having fun at the fair this weekend. Thank you. Thank you. That brings us to uh, the report from the Board of Trustees from the Desert Area Teachers Association, Ms. Poole. Okay, I wrote it down. President Ferris, Superintendent Dr. Moore, members of the board, community, and colleagues. Um, here we are. I'm in a sweater and I'm thrilled. <laughs> um, I do want to say it was a lot more comfortable Monday when I got to sit up there, so I'm a little disappointed being back in the cheap seats. Um, and Anytime uh, you'd like this one, I'll be glad to give it up. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> no. Whenever my daughter offers to give me her grandson, her son, my perfect grandson, I'm like, no. If you want to give it away, no thanks. Um, so let's see if I, oh, it was my whole joke. If I leave early, which I might, because I'm super tired because my play goes up a week from tomorrow and I don't actually have one of the costumes made, um, I won't be protesting the seats. I'm just going to, might leave early so I can sleep, but I probably won't. Um, this year has been really uh, pretty cool for me as data president because we have that, um, what's it called, grant. So I, so I get the period of day to go out and do data work and I go to all the sites, which is just really phenomenal um, that I can have these conversations. And I think it's really helpful because it gets teachers thinking. And a, a lot of the stuff that they ask me, I can just give them answers. And I, and I think in a lot of ways it, it, it lets people, I think it's healthy because if someone has a complaint, you know, I can hear about it right away. And um, I, I think it's wonderful. But What's been really fun is I've been I've been following Dr. Moore around um, and meeting her. So it's been it's been more fun because I've so, somebody else talked to because um, in between lunches we're like, well, when's the next teacher coming in? Um, but it's been really cool being able to see that. First of all, I think it's it's just really gets who we've never had. Uh, I don't think we've had a superintendent that I remember coming in and doing that. And I think a lot of people appreciate um, the fact that you're actually taking the time to do that. Um, and, uh, you know, I listen to what people say, so it allows me to get some insight. Um, and also what, I, what I've what i noticed is that for the most part, like we're here because we want to be, like we're teaching here and we're at the school because this is the community, however we ended up here, we like and we want to stay here. And most of us, uh, like our colleagues and our site admin, and I, and I think this is really important. And so when we have something that, you know, could be loosely called a complaint, often it's really like, here, we could do this better, and we could be better. And I think when we kind of focus on that, it, it helps all of us, right? Because we all get pretty passionate about this. And, and so when we're saying, hey, hey, this is a problem, it's not because we just want to be problematic. It's like, let's, it's, you know, keep it this way because it works or change it because we need to. And as we go, the other thing I've learned, which I kind of already knew, we're all very apprehensive about next year, right? And 
one of the reasons is that a lot of us don't know where we'll be. So if you are a sixth grade teacher or an elementary, you know, there's a lot of reasons why you could end up in a place where you didn't expect to be, which can always happen and, and you know, we'll still have jobs, but to have to go somewhere else is a big deal. Um, so I just think it's important as we go into a year that's going to be challenging, right? And the best, if everything goes well, it's still gonna be a challenge. And I just wanna point out again that we have this pretty good relationship, right, between data and the district and um, that we all really care. So even when we have these disagreements, I think it's really important that we understand you know, each side is coming from a place where they, they care and then we just uh, kind of have this conflict sometimes. So, um, and finally, next Friday and Saturday and the Friday and Saturday after that, the Outsiders, there are some big fans of the Outsiders here um, and I think my kids are doing a really great job, a little self-promotion, so come on down. Thank you. Ms. Pianis has uh, let us know that there will not be a report tonight from the uh, board of, from the uh, California School Employees Association. So we move right to communications from the public. And uh, the board will provide time during the discussion of each agenda item for members of the public to comment. But at this time, members of the public may address the board on items that are not on the agenda. Uh, your comments should relate to items of public interest within the board's jurisdiction. The law prohibits the board from taking action on items that are not on the agenda, and if appropriate, your comments will be referred to staff for response. When addressing the board, please state your name and limit your remarks to three minutes. In accordance with the board bylaws, the board will limit the total time for public comment for 30 minutes. Uh, if those wishing to address the board beyond that 30 time limit, limit may do so at the end of the scheduled meeting agenda. So if you'd like to speak to the board, please step up to the center microphone and identify yourself. Thank you so much. Good evening. My name is Christine Howard, and I wanted an opportunity to follow up on some comments that I made last month during our public uh, opportunity to discuss some things. This is with regards to the bond issue, and I've had a lot of conversations since then people wanting to know why the bond failed in 2022. And I believe it failed for the same reasons that I have concerns about the issue in 2024. And that is we are in a very difficult economic time period. And according to the Wall Street Journal, who just published a series of documentations earlier this month, most Americans, as many as 59%, are worse off today than they were two years ago during the last election cycle. Now, what concerns me is that SSUSD is still asking for additional funding. No one is disputing that repairs need to be made. No one is disputing anything with regards to safety issues, but the timing is very questionable. Just because people are struggling to make ends meet. For example, if this bond passes with the current assessed value of 0.06% per $100, that's a bill of $1,362. Now, no, you're not paying it at one time. The bond will be spread out over a period of roughly 10 years. That's $136.20. What concerns me, ladies and gentlemen, is that on the new tax bill tonight, I am paying SSUSD $200.26 tonight. This is my tax bill that I just received from Kern County. If you add those two bills together, I will be paying SSUSD $336.46 a year. Now, perhaps that's not an issue in a lot of households. That's an issue for me. And I think for many of those 59%, of Americans that are struggling just as much, if not more. It is something that needed to be discussed long before the bond was ever placed on the ballot. I think we can do better as a community, as a school district, and I certainly hope that there are endeavors on the part of the board and the community members to do so in the future. Thank you for your time. Thank you. 
Anyone else wish to address the board at this time? An item is not on the agenda. Hearing none, we will move to Educational Administration 6.1, appointment of industry business members to career technical uh, consultation advisory. Ms. Decker. Good evening, President Ferris, members of the board, Superintendent Dr. Moore, staff and community. California Education Code 8070 requires the governing board of each school district participating in a career technical education program to appoint a CTE consultation advisory to develop recommendations on the program and provide liaison between the district and potential employers. The school must consult with a diverse body of educational partners, including secondary teachers and administrators, counselors, state, regional, or local workforce development boards, local business leaders, parents, students, and representatives of special populations. The following business and community representatives have volunteered for and are recommended for appointment to the Sierra Sands Career Technical Consultation Advisory. The first group are all from Saracoso. We have Suzanne Ama, who is the Department Chair for Digital Media Arts and Information Technology. Matthew Wanta, the Department Chair of Allied Health and the Director of Nursing. And Don Ward, Department Chair for Paralegal and Business. And Nicole Harper, CTE Department Liaison. The next person is Carl Etling, who is a Boeing field rep for China Lake. Alexia Sveda is a program co coordinator for B3K Prosperity. Erica Beeler is RDG Comms, which is NOCWD, and the rest of these are NOCWD, so I don't repeat it. Scott Hawkins, STEM Student Outreach. Angel Zamoran, STEM Outreach and Student Employment. Ray Hawker, Branch Head for Visual Projects. Mike Peterson, Senior Engineer from the Parachute Branch. We also have David Santiago, who is the Business Services Specialist for the Employers Training Resource, um, America's Job Center. Scott O'Neill, the Executive Director of IWV Economic Development Corp. Sharon Boyer, Consuelo Bain, and Cynthia Swafford, all from GT4. We have Rick Kelly from TEA LLC, and Manuel Ruiz from Ridgecrest Cinemas. In addition, the committee consists of Sierra Sands teaching staff, students, parents, counselors, and administrators. Incidental costs for this advisory are considered a reasonable expense through Perkins funds and are anticipated to be less than $200. The 24-25 Perkins allocation is $63,333. It is recommended the board appoint the individuals named above to the Sierra Sands Career Technical Consultation Advisory for the 24-25 school year. Move recommended action. Second. Been moved and second. Any questions or comments from board members? Just always appreciate all the, the, the commitment that these people make to assist us. It's a pretty impressive list of folks, and it really is a, uh, uh, something we really owe a great of gratitude, a debt of gratitude for for what they're contributing to our kids. So, um, no questions. Any questions or comments from members of the public? All in favor, say aye. Oops, no. Roll call, Mary. Sorry, aye. Robert. Aye. Mike. Aye. Kurt. Aye. Myself. Aye. It is unanimous. That brings us to item two: approval of memorandum of understanding between the Kern Community College District, on behalf of Saracoso Community College, and Sierra Sands Unified School District for the Middle College High School Program. Dr. Savko. This is an amazing culmination of many, many months of work and an extraordinary partnership with the gem of our valley, Saracoso. So the purpose of this MOU is to detail the relationship between Kern Community College District on behalf of Saracoso Community College and Sierra Sands to jointly support the Middle College High School program at, on campus at Saracoso. It establishes how we will collaborate to ensure a quality middle college program that operates under the appropriate California Education Code sections. The term of this initial, hopefully, MOU is between November 1st, 2023 
2024 to June 30, 2029. It's recommended that the board approve this memorandum of understanding. Move recommended action. Second. Been moved and second. Any questions or comments from board members? I just again like to thank um, the president from Saracoso for coming tonight to be a part of this. So thank you so much for being here. Other questions or comments? Uh, yeah, I'll just. Kirk? So I um, had the opportunity to be at the uh, Kern Community College District Board meeting up at Saracoso last week to. Um, you know, witness their approval of this uh, this item and um, great brief given by Dr. Savko and her team. And um, it was very gratifying to hear all the positive comments from the Kern Community District Board, board members. Um, they were pretty impressed with, uh, with this plan and, and seemed pretty enthused. So that was, uh, it was great. Um, so thank you, Dr. Hancock and, 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 and your team for, for everything you did to get us to this point, and we'll, we'll see where we go from here. Thanks. I just want to echo that, Dr. Hancock. Thank you so much. I felt like it was a really warm welcome that we received up to Saracoso and with the uh, current Community uh, College Board. Um, looking forward to exciting things for our students and our continued work together for the, the members of our community in general. So. Um, any comments or questions from members of the public? All in favor? Oh. <laughs> Roll call vote. Mary? Aye. Robert? Aye. Mike? Aye. Kurt? Aye. Myself? Aye. It makes it unanimous. Thank you so much and thank you for being here tonight. That brings us to Policy Review Committee, uh, approval of updated board policies and administrative regulations. Move Dr. That, Moore. Move the recommended action. Second. Recommended action has been moved and seconded. Any questions or comments of the work of the committee? Any questions or comments on the policy review as presented from the public? If not, all in oh, I'll have a roll call vote. <laughs> Mary. Aye. Robert. Aye. Mike. Aye. Kurt. Aye. And myself. Aye. It is unanimous. That brings us to personnel administration, a report to the board, and a quarterly report of the Williams Uniform Complaints. I recommend that we receive it since there's no, uh, no fine actions. Note is as received. Moves to item two. Approval of resolution number 12, 2425, and 132425, and 142425, teachers teaching out of their major, minor field or area. Mr. Ald. Educa education code sections 44256, 44258.2, and 44263 require the board to adopt resolutions in order for the district to assign teachers in areas or subjects other than the credentialed field. A uh, total of 13 teachers within the district have been assigned to teach in areas other than their credential field or ever area. They have, however, completed the required coursework to enable them to teach the designated subjects or grade levels in accordance with the education code. Uh, if you look at the list, you'll notice that some of our most veteran teachers are, in, are included um, on this list. So. There are no financial implications. It's recommended that the Board of Education adopt resolutions number 12, number 13, and number 14 as presented. Move the recommended action. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any questions or comments from board members? Any questions or comments, members of the public or staff? I will call for a vote. Mary? Aye. Robert? Aye. Mike? Aye. Kurt? Aye. Myself? Aye. It is unanimous. Brings us to Item three, approval of field work agreement with Point Loma Nazarene University. Mr. Ald. District periodically enters into an agreement with the university to provide field work experience for students enrolled in pupil personnel and counseling preparation programs. Uh, in this particular case, the um, agreement is with Point Loma Nazarene University. There are no financial implications. It's recommended that the board approve the field work agreement as presented. Move a recommended action. Second. Been moved and second. Any questions or comments from board members? Questions or comments from members of the public or staff? Call for the vote. Mary? Aye. Robert? Aye. Mike? Aye. Kurt? Aye. Myself? Aye. It is unanimous. 
That brings us to general administration 9.1, adoption of resolution number 10, 2425, month of the military family appreciation. Dr. Moore. Thank you. This is our second annual uh, time of bringing this resolution forward. We started with it last year at this time, and it will help us to designate the Military Family Appreciation Month in the month of November. And it also serves as a supporting document as our schools um, are, are applying for the Purple Star designation. Uh, we know we have Richmond School, who we saw earlier this evening greeting us as we entered, that has a Purple Star designation. And we started this resolution to just commemorate the great strength and support we have for our military families. This year, we have at least one more school that is ready to apply. And others may still be considering, because that's do here in the very near future. And um, uh, for all the reasons included in the resolution, we recommend that we adopt Resolution 10 as presented and designate November as Military Family Appreciation Month in the Sierra Sands Unified School District. Move recommend that action. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any questions or comments? I just want to comment that I think this is a wonderful thing. And uh, you know those specific kids that uh, do have to deal with that challenge in their life, it's important that they are supported. So uh, I think it's a great, great thing we do. Um, any questions or comments, members of the public? I will call for the vote. Mary? Aye. Robert? Aye. Mike? Aye. Kurt? Aye. Myself? Aye. It is unanimous. That brings us to item two, gifts to the district. Mr. Rockenwell. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so tempted to say what I'm thinking. Um, before I read it, I, I have to admit, I opened this up and I, my jaw hit the table. I mean, I, I don't think I've seen gifts of this size maybe ever in my 18 years on the board. Um, I'm not sure what these guys are doing, but I'm pretty grateful. So, um, the following gifts were received. Spearpoint Construction LLC is donating all labor and materials for the construction of the expansion of the Robert Kelly Wall, $34,778, and the demolition of the old wall, $13,625, with a total cash value of $48,403. You think that's a lot? Hang on. Spearpoint Construction is also donating the labor and materials to improve the Burroughs High School baseball infield totaling a cash value of $637,469.22. Dr. Moore made a cash donation to the Portrait of a Graduate Scholarship Fund in the amount of $1,000. Donations provide support to the district and have a positive financial impact. I move that we accept the gifts as presented and send uh, big, happy, appropriate letters of thanks. I have a motion and a second. Any questions or comments? I'd like to uh, make a comment. Uh, Spear Point is um, Kevin Martin and Matt Newman, homegrown alumni that have always supported this community and especially our district. Um, just just want to thank them. And next time I see them, I'll, I'll, I'll make sure that we pass on our, our, our thanks. Um, but, uh, yeah, I know it's a, a lot of work. I think they're going to rip out all the um, grass and replace the grass fields. And, Sounds like a lot of work. Any questions or comments from members of the public? We'll call for the vote. Mary? Aye. Robert? Aye. Mike? Aye. And, and thank you, Dr. Moore, too, for your cash donation. That's a tough one. Should have been of the month. <laughs> Kurt? Aye. <laughs> Myself, aye, it is unanimous. That brings us to item three. Authorization of board member travel to the annual school trustee fall dinner meeting of the Kern County School Boards Association. Dr. Moore. Thank you, President Ferris. As you know, we have a board protocol that we must take uh, action in a regular meeting to authorize any board member travel expenses. And we have our upcoming annual school trustees fall dinner meeting of the Kern County School sure. Boards Association uh, coming up. And we would like to um, have you consider the um, expenses of a, up to approximately $175 with gas and dinner um, reservations at the dinner. And this is well within the $30,000 budgeted for 
this expense. So this is for your discussion and potential approval. Move the recommended action. Second. Okay, so this actually isn't a recommended action, so you're moving we approve the, the amount. Uh, with this not right? Right? <laughs> well, yeah, review the post travel and do we want to authorize it? Because we do need right. to take action, right? Right. right. So, so, the, we, so typically this is not a specific recommended action by administration because this is something we should do ourselves. So uh, that's a little distinction is all. So we want to do it, right? <laughs> recommend that uh, we authorize the uh, travel for the two board members to attend right. this. Thank you, Mike. And I have a second? I'll second that. All right. <laughs> Any discussion? Thank you, Bill. You, Bill. Any questions for the public? Call for vote. Mary? Aye. Robert? Aye. Mike? Aye. Kirk? Aye. Myself? Aye. It is yes. Brings us to construction administration. Report to the board. Construction activities and issues. Mr. Moore. President Ferris, members of the board, Superintendent Dr. Moore, faculty, members of the community. I've seen some faces that I don't recognize. I'm Jeff Moore. I'm the director of facilities for the Sierra Sands Unified School District, and I'm here to update you on some of the construction items. Richmond has been moving forward. Now that we have the buildings up and with windows that could be broken and with miles of copper run through the infrastructure, we have an overwatch camera system that uh, monitors movement throughout the night and contacts the police, the construction management company, and the district designee at any hours of the night when the contractors do not expect employees at the job site, even if it's 3 a.m. Trust me, they do notify me at 3 a.m. They go through, uh, even if it's a rebar worker going at 3 a.m. because uh, 5 o'clock they're going to start pouring concrete. But it makes the job site more secure and <clears throat> guarantees vandalism is going to get stopped right away. The grounds are starting to look like a 21st century school. Asphalt, concrete, paint, trees, and shrubs. High efficiency solar panels that double as parking shade are all coming together nicely. Some of the trees that we'll see grow over the next 20 years or so here at Richmond. Um, and here are some of the 5 a.m. concrete workers that got me a call. But they're pouring concrete. Look at the quad. That, uh, that's going to be a, uh, just breathtakingly beautiful. It is coming together so beautifully. Um, this is a picture of some of the awnings that are going to be covering, helping the blazing heat that we get during our hot hottest months. They're going to, and they're also rugged against the, uh, the fair air that kicked in today. But the next slide is my favorite because it's been long in coming. Our switch gear panel oh, is on the way. Wait, wait, wait. It's, it's on the way. I said on the way. <laughs> and if the secretary could note that President Ferris did dance a jig. Uh, it's estimated arrival is around November 18th. No, November 18th, around there. 24? <laughs> well, I'm excited because we expect it to be on the ground, and it'll be a real positive step. See what I did there? On the ground. Positive. Thank you. When it's in place and configured on the site, the high and low voltage load testing across the campus can finally take place. And that load testing confirms the engineering specs on the electrical system balance and they're insulated properly. It ensures efficiency and safety with so many volts and amps going across the entire campus. Earlier today, I met with our tech department working out what we need for Richmond's technology infrastructure and that'll give the students a great advantage towards succeeding in their future. Our students may never understand what a big deal it was that we were able to accomplish so much with this school project. Allocating 20% of the build, we leveraged 80% funds from the Department of Defense on this, accomplishing so much more than we could have done without it. I hope we could do that again very soon. Strategic planning continues with the Murray expansion, the project is uh, being optimized so we can use the available resources we do have to accommodate the seventh and eighth graders as the community reimagines junior high. And we'll keep you posted on those steps as they take place. Thank you, President Ferris, board members, Superintendent Dr. Moore, and everybody else. If you have any questions, I'll do my best. 
Any questions? Just happy. I was going to say, I, ha I have to say you made my day, sir. <laughs> Any other questions or comments? Any questions or comments, members of the public? Thank you so much for the report. Brings the administration. We will temporarily adjourn the meeting of the Sierra Sands Unified School District Board of Education to convene the meeting of the Inukern Schools Financing Authority. Uh, and we will, uh, uh, the agenda is, has, I believe, only the minutes. So if you have reviewed the minutes and they seem appropriate, they will stand as presented. We will adjourn the meeting of the Inukern Schools Financing Authority, reconvene the meeting of the Sierra Sands Unified School District Board of Education and move to the consent calendar Should item 13. Calendar. Second. I have a motion for the entire consent calendar and a second. Any questions or comments on any items on the consent calendar? Hearing none, I will call for the vote. Mary? Aye. Robert? Aye. Mike? Aye. Kurt? Aye. Myself? Aye. It is unanimous. That brings us to future agenda oh, items. Are there any items recommended to be put on the future agenda? Hearing none, before we adjourn, I would like to leave you with this thought. The greatest natural resource is our young people. And with that, we will adjourn. The uh, next meeting is November the, the, which, the first, 21st. Thank you, in this very same chambers. Thank you so much for coming. Go out and do good. <laughs> <laughs>